Welcome to Garden of Life Online News with your anchor Hadasa Emuna and co-anchor Ishayahu Sio. Welcome to this edition of the Barsha Weekly News. This week's tour portion is by Yid C, which means and he went out. You can find this week's tour portion in Genesis 28 verse 10 to Genesis 32 verse 3. In this week's tour portion, Jacob leaves his hometown of Beersheba and journeys to Haran. the place and sleeps there dreaming of a ladder connecting heaven and earth with angels climbing and descending on it. God appears and promises that the land upon which he lies will be given to his descendants. In the morning, Jacob raises the stone on which he laid his head as an altar and a monument, pledging that it will be made the house of God. In Haran, Jacob stays with and works for Laban, tending Laban's sheep. Laban agrees to give him his younger daughter, Rachel, whom Jacob loves, in marriage in return for seven years of labor. Seven years? Thank you. But on the wedding night, Laban gives him his elder daughter, Leah, instead. Oh no, keep talking! A deception Jacob discovers only in the morning. Jacob marries Rachel too, a week later, after agreeing to work another seven years for Laban. What? Another seven years? Leah gives birth to six sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, and a daughter, Dinah, while Rachel remains barren. Rachel gives Jacob her handmaid, Bilhah, as a wife to bear children in her stead, and two more sons, Dan and Naphtali, are born. Leah does the same with her handmaid, Zilpah, who gives birth to Gad and Asher. Finally, Rachel's prayers are answered, and she gives birth to Joseph. Jacob has now been in Haran for 14 years and wishes to return home. But Laban persuades him to remain, now offering him sheep in return for his labor. Jacob prospers despite Laban's repeated attempts to swindle him. After six years, Jacob leaves Haran in stealth, fearing that Laban would prevent him from leaving with the family and property for which he labored. Laban pursues Jacob, but is warned by God in a dream not to harm him. Laban and Jacob make a pact on the Mount Galgad, attested to by a pile of stones, and Jacob proceeds to the Holy Land, where he is met by angels. Well, that just about wraps up this edition of the Garment of Life Hotline. Wait, wait, wait! I'm just hearing that we have Rebecca and Jacob ready to give us an interview right now. Let's switch over. Yes! So, Rivka, please, tell us, at Yaakov's, as Yaakov's mother, what exactly did you say to Yaakov to convince him to get the blessing from Isaac? I remember, I remember, I remember, like it was yesterday. Even though it's been 60 years of hot spots already. I remember when I was pregnant, and uh, even though it was... I was a happy girl. I'm still a happy girl. But I remember that we prayed so much for these kids. 20 years it took us to pray. And finally, when the babies, I conceived, I have this belly and I could not take care anymore. I cry and I cry and I cry and I cry. And I say, Hashem, it's better to die. And then I said, what is this? What is this going on? And then Hashem said, there's two nations in your womb. And the younger will so be older. So I always kept that in my heart. So the moment came. Finally, the moment came. When, when, when he sat there and he called, and he called his son and he said, my son. So, but no. First, first of all, I remember that Yitzhak called Esau, and when I saw Esau going inside the tent, 
I put my ear in the tent and I heard their conversation and he said, my son, my son, it's time, the time is near for me to go, to die, and I want you to go to the field and, and hunt some of the game that you, that you made for me, and then you will come and I will give you the blessing. You can imagine how I felt at the moment I remember the words of Hashem, and then I call my beloved son Yaakov, and Yaakov, and Yaakov, and, and, and I have to convince him, I say, you have to go inside the tent and you have to get the blessing, because your brother is going to come and he's going to get the blessing. Do you remember my son? And then I, I, I said, I went to the tent and I got Esau's garments, and I put it on him, like this. So I put it on him, and then, and then I told him that he goes. And that if anything happened, his curse will be upon me. And that's how the story goes. And you cannot say anything about it. You mom, cannot talk before the matriarch. Mom. You cannot talk before the matriarch. You don't want to lie, mom. Well, well, my son, you have to do. Can you imagine if the blessing will go to Esau, how the world is going to be? We don't know. The descendants will lose everything. Sorry, my son. Such a well thought of and sophisticated operation that it was. I would say. Yaakov, you had a supernatural encounter. Tell us more about that incredible night. We want to know everything. I, I was terrified. I, I've never lied to my father before. And then I was afraid he was going to know that it wasn't my brother and I was afraid and but we do have the same voice. I know that the difference is that my brother doesn't have a shame in his heart and I do and I thought my father was going to recognize that he wasn't my brother. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca and Jacob. Yes. We really appreciated Muchas, that interview. Muchas gracias. Well, that just about wraps up this edition of the Garden of Life Online News. This is Hadassah Bruna and Mishael Sion reporting live from Jerusalem, Israel. Shabbat Shalom. What did you say to Yaakov to convince him to, to get the blessing before his father? Well, um, I have to tell you the things how they really happened. Um, the truth is that, that it was the time for Yaakov we were near the, the Yaakov time to go and be with with Abraham Abinu. And 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 it and it happened that an airplane is flying and we cannot record this because the airplane is flying. <laughs> I think that's a extraterrestrial life. What is an airplane? Where you get that from? What 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 dictionary you get that from? How you know it's an airplane you learned in the that? first place? I would, I would like to know. You don't know what it is, right? <laughs> so to draw this drawing for Parsha Vayitzi, first we're, gonna, first we're going to start with Jacob. He was laying down on the floor. I'm going to start at this side of the paper and just go like right about this high. Go straight across. Eh, it's not going too far. I'm going to go as straight as possible. Go straight. Maybe hump over here, and then go down. Then I'm just going to do the outline of his face. It's a line angled up like that. Then you're going to go straight up. Then we're just going to continue making the outline of his face, curving up a little bit, up for his nose, back down. And then the outline of his hat is kind of more curved. Like that. Then I'll do the inside like this, and then just continue it like that. I'll stop there for now. 
The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to start back over here and start doing outlines of rocks. I'll go around him like this and just continue going up and I'm going to do the same thing that I did down here but on top. Like that. And then I'm just going to make like a band on his hat. I don't even know what to call that. But his band. And then like kind of like the outline of his shirt, where his shirt is. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm just going to do a little outline of the ladder. So, from here, centered between the grid lines, I'm going to start one side of the grid lines, maybe like right here. Just kind of go up, okay? As we approach the top, we're going to start curving outward. Like that. Same with the other side. You want to end at these same points over here and curve at the same parts, if you can, as best as you can. Then I'm just going to kind of make the thickness of it, maybe curve out a little bit here. You want to keep the same thickness the entire way up. And then we can just kind of like draw the ladder, the ladder, on it, the ladder steps. By just doing horizontal lines, connecting to both sides. You want to even space them out as even as you can. I'll do one more and stop right there. Because from there it's kind of going to be like you can't see any further. Last thing we're going to do is kind of make the outline of the land. And it's like right about here, just doing a straight line from here to there. And other than that, that is how you draw the drawing for Vaitsi. Next, next is the painting. So we're going to be starting how to paint the painting Vaitsi. And as you can see, we have here Jacob sleeping and he's having his dream and we're going to be painting all the angels on this ladder ascending and descending that's going to come out to be really nice so how we're going to start is something new i have right here is a it's kind of like a sponge brush if you don't have this it's it's okay you can use a normal brush an angle brush or something like that i'm just using this for a specific technique that i'm trying to get for and if you do have one of these great this brush works best with a little bit of water so I'm going to be constantly dipping my this, this brush into water and also painting as well. Um, so we're going to start off with the background and we're just going to have um, some dark blue because it is night. Jacob is sleeping. So it's just a dark blue. And go ahead and wet the tip of your spongy brush just a little bit. You don't want it to be too wet, but just a little bit. And the, so the technique I'm going to do, be doing here is I'm just going to turn my paper a little bit and start at the corner and just turn, kind of swirl. And so if your brush gets a little too wet, I'm just having a separate paper towel that I can use just to like dry it just a bit. Because if it gets too wet, it's just gonna make your painting look watery. And then when we're going down for um, getting closer to Jacob, we'll just like stop with the sky. So next we're gonna start working on the ladder that the angels are climbing and descending on. And for that, I'm gonna start off kind of with like a lighter looking blue. And the color I'll be using is in these colors is called Atlantis. And we're just gonna basically do like the ends of the ladder. So like the part that goes up and down. Same brush, we're using the same brush. Make sure it's a little wet so it blends well. 
and we'll just we want to make it kind of narrow not not too wide and we'll just basically go up and down so now I'm gonna start mixing a little bit of white in here and we're just gonna kind of do again the swirling motion that we had going before So next, I'm gonna kind of be doing like a swirl in the middle of the ladder, and I'm gonna be using a combination of my dark blue and a tiny bit, very, very little bit of black just to make it a little darker than the background. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the blue and then just a little bit in the black so we can get a dark, kind of swirl. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on one side and we're just going to kind of start out like this, take a turn, and just keep doing that motion. And we're going to do the same thing but in the other direction. So start on this side. So now that we have our swirls kind of done, I'm going to be doing kind of like, just like a yellow zigzag line with a little bit of yellow, like not too much yellow. It's going to kind of mix in and blend in. That's what we want. It's just going to be kind of like a yellow zigzag line, starting from the bottom and working its way up. So the next step is to, uh, we're going to be using that same light blue I was talking about earlier and we're just going to kind of do it along the bottom of this night here. Same swirling motion, just a little bit. So next is kind of like the fun part. We're going to be using a lot of white and we're just going to be kind of like going all over the these columns here, down here, and then up into the sky, into heaven. So we're going to be using a lot of white. Less water, we want the white to stick out and be like noticeable. So we use a little less water. So I'm going to give that brush um, a rest real quick and I'm going to switch to my angle brush. It doesn't matter what size, kind of a medium sized angle brush would suffice. And I'm just going to do like the things you step on on a ladder. Here. So I'm going to try to do it straight. And I'm just going to start at the bottom and work my way up these lines. We see that when like Jacob, he left Beersheba and he set out for Haran in this Torah portion, Baitzi. And when he reached a certain place, like in our painting that we'll soon see, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. It was basically nighttime. He wouldn't have gone hiking in the dark. And taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and laid down to sleep. That would kind of be like a hard pillow. You'll see that when we have these stones here, we will um, paint them all in. And he had a dream, right, in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching in the heavens, up here is what we're trying to replicate, and then its bottom reaching on the earth. And they were angels, they were ascending and descending in us. So some angels were going up, some angels were going down. And on top of the ladder stood the Lord, and the Lord said to Jacob while he was sleeping, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you, speaking of Jacob and your descendants, the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. That is also the promise that was to Abraham and to Isaac. It's just following down to Jacob. 
that nation which which God is talking about is the nation of Israel and where Jacob is sleeping is the land of Israel so next I'm gonna work on basically my angels and for the angels I'm gonna be using yellow they're gonna have a yellow um, shiny light kind of bright heads and I'm just gonna do circles for the heads and then for their robe or gown they're gonna have um, white gowns so I'm just gonna draw circles around um, the different areas of the ladder and then I'll do the the gowns in a minute With the same brush, make sure you get all of the yellow paint off. We're going to be doing the angel's white, um, kind of like robes or gowns. And for that, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna like, kind of like a rectangle, but it widens at the bottom. We see if we go back a little bit in the timeline that after Jacob receives his blessing from his father, his mission basically begins. I mean, Jacob was carrying with him both blessings, if you really think about it. The blessing of the firstborn, which he was supposed to give to Esau, and the blessing from his father, Isaac, releasing him from the family. We see a couple of hints in this part of the Torah portion. We see that one, he went towards Haran, but stayed at Beersheba. Beersheba is the place where Yaakov had the vision of the ladder. So right here in our picture, he's at Beersheba. And the angels you can see now are ascending and descending. But before Jacob had the vision, he had to set up his place to spend the night, right? Set up camp there in Beersheba. And basically, commentators say that Jacob gathered 12 stones and that these 12 stones represent the 12 tribes of Israel, which he would later, which basically is like his future, right? We see that the 12 stones that Jacob gathered are the key to understanding the purpose of Jacob's mission, which is to continue the promise that was given to Abraham. The 12 stones, some believe, represent the 12 tribes of Israel. There were the 12 tribes of his future legacy, right? Yisrael. He put the stones around him to protect himself from snakes, right? Basically, he's in like the wilderness and he's gonna go to sleep and he doesn't have a house, he's all by himself. He's gonna sleep in the middle of nowhere, so he's on the ground, there could be snakes, lizards, frogs, who knows. So he puts these rocks around him to protect himself, right? I can see how that makes sense. But when he fell asleep in the stones, right? He fell asleep and he had the vision of the sulam. In, in Hebrew is sulam, which is a stairway from the earth that reached all the way to the heavens. And basically the angels were ascending and descending on it. You can see we have our ladder going here and then the angels ascending and descending on it. So now we're going to be working on um, Yaakov down here. We can do his um, robe and the rocks around him and in his face and that will um, give us a more complete picture of our painting. I'm going to be using kind of like a dark red slash brown for his robe. Usually like if you see, if you hear stories or even in real life, if you have, I'm assuming like if you have people sleeping in the wilderness or in like a dangerous area, you would have or if you have several people, you would have one stay out, stay up and be the lookout, right, to protect the others, and you would have like shifts. But Jacob, he was all by himself, so he had nobody to like stand watch, and he was tired, so his only option was to go to sleep, surround himself with rocks. For Jacob's face, we can just do kind of like a light brown here. We can also do like a little hat for Jacob here. For his hat, I'm just gonna be using like a, kind of a dark blue, but a light blue, but also like in the middle. It's really pretty blue. So the next part is all these stones, right? These 12 stones, I'm gonna be using a kind of like a brown, a combination of colors really like these browns here I could even use some of this so get creative you can even use gray for the stones 
if you prefer brown, whatever you like, just experiment a little. For the effect that we want, we're gonna want to do some stones in front, in front of Jacob and in the back of him, and also around his head. And stones, they're not like perfect, so you don't wanna do like perfect rectangles or anything like that. You could just do kind of like, really like not perfect shapes. Have you ever been like in your bed and it's like cold outside or around you and you're just surrounded by like, I don't know, stuffed animals or pillows or blankets and you just feel so cozy? I wonder if this was as comfortable as that. Rocks? So we see that Jacob, right, his just one blessing given by his father activated basically the promise and the mission of Yaakov. In the above, right, the, the saloon, the stairway, there stood the Lord at the top, assuring the mission of Yaakov and promising him that he will give the land to his descendants. Each one of us, each one of us is born into the world with a mission, right? Somewhere in the line of our ancestors, there is a promise given. So our goal in life should always be to fulfill our mission and to stay focused, to first figure out what our mission is and then do it. Okay, so we have our stones. For the, um, for the side over here, I'm just gonna kinda do like the dirt. We can mix it up with some yellow some brown and yellow, even some red in there, and create like a different color. So now that my painting, this part of my painting is pretty much dry, I'm gonna go back in with my sponge brush. Make sure your sponge brush is dry. You can even get like a paper towel or squeeze it down the sink or something like that. Make sure it's really dry and then I'm gonna continue um, to do another coat of the white um, swirly thing we have going here. So now as a last step, this is totally optional. I have some different glitter paints that I have here. I have like a gold, a dark blue, and a silver looking one. And so what I was thinking for this, it's up to you too. You can have the gold glitter and do kind of like on, around the heads of the angels. And then for the blue glitter, I was just gonna do like around the sky over here. And then the silver glitter, I was just gonna do like on the ladder and up in the heavens here, just to give it some shine. Something, um, you can either use your paintbrush or if you don't mind, you could even use your finger. I used my finger, but I started off with the paintbrush. In a deeper understanding of this Torah portion, we, we can um, see that when we come to the ways of the Lord and when we follow His Torah, a special blessing is released from above, just like Jacob, right? We know he was a learned man. He loved to study the Torah. He studied the ways of the Torah and he was blessed with a special blessing. When we're blessed with His blessing, you know, we can't settle in the same place anymore. Meaning, like, we can't do the things we used to that were not of the Lord, right? We're, we're a different person. We do different things, right? We can't settle in the same place, spiritually. And a blessing has been released on us as individuals, right? Also corporately, like, as a group. Jacob woke up from his sleep at the end of the Torah portion and he knew that God was in this place, right? And he said basically that the place was awesome. I would too. If I knew God was there, yeah, the place is awesome.
so here we have it, our painting of Vayitzi. We see Jacob here, he's resting in Beersheba. He found a place to rest and go to sleep. So he, he gathered his stones, put them around him so he could be safe from, from the night creatures and stuff like snakes. And while he was he, while he was sleeping, he had a dream of a ladder and angels ascending and descending on the ladder. And basically, the ones that were ascending were going into heaven, and then the ones that were descending were coming down to earth. And at the top of the ladder, Jacob sees God, and God reassures Jacob of his promise that he made to Abraham. And basically, when he, Jacob wakes up, he makes a pillar, and he moves on with his journey. So, I hope you enjoyed painting this painting with me of Vaitzi. See you next time.